Well, hello, hi, and how you doing? Gordo the Techs are here. Oh, what do you think of that cool new like background? Star Trek, yeah, Star Trek guy. guy. Ooh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Anyway, welcome to another exciting episode of Hibachi Talk. Please uh, pull up a chair, grab yourself a libation, and join us for kind of an interesting, very interesting and unique show. I've got Andrew the Security Guy, hey, who's hi. also the co-host of um, Cyber Underground. Yeah. And you're also the um, co-host of the week. Of the week? Yeah. For yeah. here? Yeah. For here? Yeah. Okay, good. For I'm not here. I'm here then. For, <laughs> not just this show. <laughs> all the other shows you co-host. Anyway, we have a great guest. Is Craig Kule? I, I want to say um, Kluwe because it's how it's supposed to be, but yes. you've Americanized it to Kluet. So yes. Craig Kluet, he's the uh, solutions engineer for Esri. So in case you don't know who Esri is, it's the Environmental Systems Research Institute, which still doesn't tell you who they are. <laughs> but we're going to here talk about the, um, uh, the science of where of which many of you do all day long with your Google Maps, your Yelp, your Uber, oh, yeah. your Lyft. We know where you are. All the GIS-related <laughs> stuff that's going on. And, and Craig is also the president of the Hawaii Geographic Inst Information Coordinating Council, H-I-G-I-C-C. -C. Now, have we haven't loaded you up with enough acronyms to throw you into delirium. I don't know what else we can do. Anyway, there's a great event coming up, but we'll get into what you're doing. We've had some GIS um, guests on before, which is kind of exciting. Okay. Um, but before we get into this, um, I do a little bit of a um, cryptocurrency update of the week. So we've been doing, following a lot of cryptocurrency and Bitcoin and so on. So I got a little bit here. Um, so just recently, a well-known mainstream financial publication called Bloomberg called Bitcoin an exchange trading fund on steroids. So pretty kind of interesting. 2011, but I thought, okay, since they said this, but let me go back and do a little reality check on this. Since 2011, Bitcoin has been declared dead 129 times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they say it's on steroids, but 129 times it's been said. Um, newsletters, writers, journalists, academics have called it a Ponzi scheme. I've heard that many a time. Others like the idea in theory, but have doubts. And um, they think it will get shut down by government and render it worthless. But I remind everybody, it's the blockchain. It's not Bitcoin. It's not Ethereum. It's the blockchain. It's like the technology that you have. You know, the, Ezra, the GIS related technology. You ain't going to shut that down. And you're not going to shut down the blockchain. So, and if, guess what? Then we just go offshore, like DCCA did with us in our Coinbase, one of my favorite stories, over and over again. Um, but I thought I'd take a look at this. So, in 2009 to 2013, Bitcoin rallied from a fraction of a penny to over 1100 bucks. So, 9 to 13, right? And then it spectacularly crashed 85% to 185 bucks. I tell you, this is not for the faint of heart. It's like crap table you're playing down there all the time. But instead of collapsing to pennies, it kind of found its way back to $200. And people started acquiring it and buying it again and buying into it again. So even though the bubble popped, Bitcoin is still worth billions of dollars. It's kind of cool stuff. Wow. So, billions. So That's I just want to tie this back and give you something to relate it to, and then we'll leave it at that. May 1997, Amazon went public and split equivalent at $1.30. Amazon went public, right? Um, it was up, went up to $113. When the bubble burst in 1990, it went to $5.97. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Remember, it, I was there. <laughs> so now we're in dot-com hatred during that time. But, you know, Amazon just continued to creep along, you know, did its thing, kept coming along. And next, you know, you know, here we are sitting out where Amazon is today. And I didn't look at it today because I'm just a happy camper where it happens to be. But anyway, so one th sure thing is that if Bitcoin is a worthless asset, like Amazon was perceived to be, why are people still buying this darn thing? I have no idea, but just for the record, today it was $2,600, up $50 from last week. That's Bitcoin. Ethereum is $267, down $50 from last week. So again, not for the fate of art. I'm not telling you to invest in it. But uh, keep watching it. This is the equivalent when the internet was so, first coming on. So in a decade, it's up 2,599 <laughs> and three quarters, $99 and 99 and three quarters cents. <laughs> I know. It's crazy. It's crazy. Anyway, that's, wow. my, that's my cryptocurrency update of the week. Um, like I said last week, last, yesterday was my last time giving free advice on this stuff. I tell you, I'm going to start charging Bitcoin. You can pay me in Bitcoin. Okay, and let's talk about the Hawaii Geographic Information Coordinating Council, ESRI, and, and Craig. So, Craig, give us a little background on who you are, where you went to school and such. Okay, so, yeah, Craig Cluet, and I came out to Hawaii to get my master's degree in geography hmm. at University of Hawaii, uh -huh. Manoa, and so that was a great school. Did a lot of work there. Before that, I went to undergrad in geography and geology in San Diego State, California. Uh, actually, though, I'm from originally from Milford, Connecticut, way on oh. the East Coast. But ah. I, I've 
I find that I like the sun in the warmth. You worked your way west and kept going. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm yeah. here now. So yeah, I've been here for a long time. After I graduated, actually, at University of Hawaii Manoa, I got a job right away, pretty much, as the GIS manager at Kamehameha Schools. Oh. So I jumped right into the land management back in the day when it was called Bishop State, in fact. <laughs> and so I went through all that for many years, and then I made the transition over to uh, Esri in 2005. So I've been there for quite a while. So how long have you been in the industry? This is like some time. Oh, yeah. Over 20 years. Now. Over 20 years. And geography wasn't geography like when he yeah. was going to school or when I was going to no, school. No, we started off with pencils and we drew maps. Yeah. And actually had Cartography. Those, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And colored them. Yep. Right? Yeah, and then we had to cut out little, like, color things and <laughs> put them on. It was quite... And then when the computers came about, they were so primitive, you actually had command line in, like, put the box over in the two inches up and two inches over. Wow. It was so painful. Yeah. And at first I thought, oh, it's not going to be great. But then, of course, nowadays... It's, it's moved on. And it's moved on because of a company that you are very familiar with because you are um, employed by them. It's Esri, right? Yes. So Esri is the uh, Environmental Systems Research Institute. Great name. It's really a, a GIS company on steroids. Yes, it's the biggest by far right now in the world. We started off, you know, the, the owner, Jack Benjamin, and his wife in the garage with $1,000 loan from mom and dad in California. And they built it from scratch. And that was over 40 years ago. And there was some, there's definitely some competition, but over the years, Esri just keeps putting so much money back into research and development that we've right. really become the leaders quite naturally, just because of the vision of the president, owner, privately held company and still. Still. And so what is it, so what is, what does it do? What, you know, what is, what is a consumer, who's a consumer and who's the student? It's interesting when people ask that, of course, because, uh, Everybody uses it, but they don't know it. So, like, right. if you go to any of the medical re uh, groups here or anywhere in the world, they want to know who their customers are, where they're going to the doctors, why are they going to this doctor, not that doctor, even though it's closer to home. Uh, of course, the U.S. Census Bureau, when they do the you know, decennial census, which is coming up, mm -hmm. they totally use us. Even in the back on Google, when you talk about Google, yeah, sure, but the Google Maps have to be built by some sort of software, and that's mm -hmm. where they would actually use someone like us to come and help some of the back end, or the USGS, Fish and Wildlife, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, not probably 911, like all the cost centers. 911, yeah, 911. Yeah, geolocation location of your phone and all that kind of yeah. stuff. So yeah. And then also, the like, the state here, it's one of our biggest customers, state and the counties. Right. Of course, they have every, you know, from parks, they go and clean garbage cans, fix potholes, fix fences, cut grass. You've got to start keeping track of that and looking at it over time. And we're working with the Department of Education. So again, they're, you know, putting all solar panels on buildings. They want to know you know, where they are, what's the condition of the roofs. You can see that now from drones or satellites even. Right. So all, everybody in the back end is using it. Or even for Dewey, you know, where school, kids go to school, why are they going to this geographic exemption? Are they being pulled away from this school? You know, because this one's better and right. so on. So it's just, a, it's just a, all that geographic information and data and so on. I mean, the city and county used to have a web, uh, used to have a mobile app called Honolulu 311. Yeah. It's not there anymore, but you could go mm -hmm. and take a photograph. Yeah. And we work with you guys. We could yep. take a photograph of yep. a trash dump, right? Send it into customer services department and track how long it took them to pick it up. Awesome. I mean, it was, it was terrific. This was under the Hanneman administration. Yeah. We did all this kind of stuff. But that app is gone now. I don't know why it's gone because it was built. Uh, you, had, it was you, running. Can, you can report potholes. You can report trash. Trash cans. cans out that, that, yeah, 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 yeah. Abandoned vehicles. Lights out on the street. Yeah. Yeah. So the citizens were getting involved. It was yep. going to get, get the people involved. I mean... Um, the sirens, you could adopt a siren, yep. Yep. right? And that was all part of the GIS, geographical information systems yep. that were built on the Esri yep. platforms. Yep. Or even some of the more fun stuff is, uh, we talk about volunteer geographic information, we call that. But a uh, company, Digital Globe, works this other company, DomTom, and works with Nature Conservancy. And they've taken air photos of like a Kauai, for example, of the forest. Okay. And then they give that out to anybody in the world who wants to look. And then they're looking for tree, Australian tree ferns and uh, those uh, African tulips. Mm -hmm. So it's crowdsourcing. So now, instead of having like, one person look at hundreds of thousands of acres looking for these little tiny plants, right. wow. anybody in the world can go online and spend, you know, during the <coughs> lunch hour and look for these things and put dots on the map. And they have all these algorithms in the back that do checking, and they score you like, oh, you're doing really good, so we'll give you some harder ones. Or ah. if they score you bad, they say, well, you know what, just get off. <laughs> but <laughs> it's happening now. They're, but they're using like geographic information systems in the back end to figure out. And then at the end, TNC now has this data set that, it, you know, it's in time, point in time, but of where all these things are. are these so, things, and these are invasive species, right? So these are invasive, invasive species. species. Exactly. So now the public's helping find these invasive species, yeah. and then the programs can be put together to go out and eradicate them. Exactly. And they're going with helicopters with paint gun balls with 
herbicides, and they have the G oh, GPS now. Yeah. They know exactly where it is. And so they can fly the helicopter right to it, go down, and there it is, and they can take it, it takes out. So we need the bullets to be able to, uh, to uh, you know, tr track their way into the side of the tree. You know, like a, the way the, way the, the military <laughs> will shine a light on a target, right? So oh, in LA, they're using a geographic information system. They have antennas on all the tall buildings. Mm -hmm. If they hear a shot, right? Automatically, yes. they're triangulating. They, they can tell the police officer, "Oh, we know it's like coming from right around over here." Yep. And they can just immediately, without someone saying, "Oh, I saw it up there." Right. They're using technology and again GIS in the background. In Chicago, I went to saw saw that in Chicago. I said, "How do you know the difference between that and the backfire?" I said, "Oh yeah, we know. <laughs> they definitely know." The computers, know. Yeah, yeah, computers can do it. They put all that stuff in. So it's really a cool field, right? Yeah, so, really fun. So facial analytics. So so one of the things though, and this part of this good field is like, if I'm a student, so well, how can I get into this kind of thing? And and so talk a little bit about that. You're, you're one billion dollar donation to um, oh, yeah. education. So Esri, again, really is big on education, and we always have been, but we actually, Jack Dangerman, the president, was uh, at the White House with President Obama a couple years ago, talking about issues and things, and President Obama kind of laid on the table, hey, you know, why don't you put your money where your mouth is, and so Jack said, okay, I will, and he gives now, it's called Connect Ed, uh, it's one word, and any school in the United States, private or public, can have the, our online software free. Right. They just fill it out. Boom, wow. any school. And so, and then we also, what we do is we work greatly with uh, women technology over at Maui Economic. Mm -hmm. They're great powerhouses of getting teachers together. And I'll go to school a couple times a year, mentor, like it's a teacher who's teaching students. To, and they're doing, now that it's on the internet and even with smartphones, it's so much easier for the students to go out and feed you know, do a little turtle count or pick up right. trash or they're doing mosquitoes or ants or whatever it is wow. they're looking for. And they can make little maps and stories and tell people about what they're doing. So it's really interesting. And getting introduced to the technology and, yeah. getting, and letting those youngs, young sponge minds come yeah. up with other ideas on things that they can use this technology for. Right. And, and these two girls, the Jenkins sisters in Molokai, two years ago, they, or three years now, they did this great big project on mangroves. And they're called mm -hmm. March of the Mangroves, how they're taking the reef. Right, right. A huge project. Esri saw the work and had them come up on our conference, our annual conference with 15,000 people. Those girls got up on stage in front of 15,000 people from Molokai and, from Molokai. Showed, and showed them what they were wow. doing from Molokai High School. Right. And then uh, one girl's at Duke and the other girl's at uh, uh, Princeton. Or, you know, these so are really Molokai. smart girls. So <laughs> Molokai wow. goes Duke and Princeton. They're, you know, hopefully they're going to be in the geography majors because geography is more than what it used to be. I mean, yeah, it's, yeah. It is just... It's sure. exciting. I liked geography when I was just coloring the maps, but imagine mm -hmm. what it would have been like when I got to do this. Well, hopefully we get to yeah. bring them back home and put them to work here, too. Yeah, you know, that's, that's also very true. They can help us with that rapid Ohio death. I mean, figure right. out how that thing is, is mm -hmm. taking over the big island and moving from one spot to the other. Right. So, so you've got, you've got all, all this work that you've got going on in es Esri, um, and then we're, you know, you've got uh, the Hawaii Geographic Information Coordinating Council, say that five times real <laughs> fast, um, and what's happening in that spot. So, but what we what we tend to do though is like I kind of try to where figure out we got, got a poignant pause. Do you have a question? You look no. like you. <laughs> I was just trying to figure out if you're going to say that five times or not. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Anyway, got Craig Cool. Clu 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 I'm sorry. I, I'm you know I'm from Canada. We oh, have the fine. French Canadian side. It's Craig Cluet. It just doesn't work for me in Clue. <laughs> it sounds so nice. It's like, you know, Bissonnet or Bissonnet. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we have Craig Cluet from uh, Solutions Engineer from Esri. We're going to take a short break. We've got Angus who took a photo of something. And if, if the Honolulu 301 is still up and running, he would have put it on nice. that. But anyway, he's annoyed again. Anyway, it's Gordo the Texar, Andrew the security guy, Craig Esri. We'll be back in a minute. You're watching Think Tech Hawaii, which streams live on thinktechhawaii.com uploads to YouTube, and broadcasts on cable OC16 and Olelo 54. Great content for Hawaii from Think Tank. Aloha. My name is Stephen Philip Katz. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, and I'm the host of Shrink Wrap Hawaii, where I talk to other shrinks. Did you ever want to get your head shrunk? Well, this is the best place to come to pick one. I've been doing this. We must have 60 shows with a whole bunch of shrinks that you can look at. I'm here on Tuesdays at 3 o'clock every other Tuesday. I hope you are too. Aloha.
Hey, welcome back to Hibachi Talk. We're on Think Tech Hawaii today with Craig Cluett from Esri. And right now, we're going to cut to Angus with a little rant. What's up, Angus? How you doing there, lad? Good, buddy. How You're you? looking great. Good to see you, man. Craig Cluett. We say Cluett in Scotland, you know. We never say that. <laughs> it's Cluett. We know that even, though, even though we fought against the French in the 15 to 1400s, we still say it the right way. <laughs> anyway, don't, don't know how to Americanize it. Just keep it the way it is. Anyway, you know, I'm really getting annoyed at the people here in Hawaii. Well, you know, the shopping carts they never put back. You know, they leave the trash everywhere. So, you know, just get, and then the graffiti. Here's a combination that you're never going to see that much. This is on New Owen Avenue, I think. It says, you know, it says, you know, the guy, the guy has to graffiti his wall to say, no dumping. And guess what they do? It didn't say dump. It said no dumping. And they left this trash right in front of his wall. Can you believe this? Come on, people. I mean, we're always yelling at government. We're always yelling at everything else. Can you just you know, pull up your socks a little bit? And just ah. take care of things. You know? My goodness. Anyway, I did not let it go like this, but get ready. I'm going to start coming down on you. And like I say at the end of every, every segment, let your wing gang feed wherever you be. Hello? Ha! Clean up your trash! There's a little rant from Angus reminding you to be a good civil servant and help out your community. Don't leave your rubbish and don't dump it in front of your neighbor's house for crying out loud. No, for crying, yeah, for crying out loud. Oh, there's a good name for this segment. Crying for crying out, 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 out loud. loud. Yeah. I know. Oh, God. We're back here with uh, Gordo and Craig. So we're learning about Esri today, and this is massive technology. It's really driving everything you do without you knowing it. You know, you... The world knows where you are because of GIS <laughs> and, and Esri. Oh, yeah, and, and not only that, even you walk into a retail store or a grocery store. I mean, you're doing a lot of in-building stuff now, too, yeah, right? Yeah, it's really a big BIM, we call it, you know, building infrastructure. Everybody wants, as soon as we map the whole world, first thing they said is not great. They said, oh, we want inside Can now. <laughs> yeah, we're like, okay. Wow. Yeah, so yeah. Three, sort of 3D modeling. Everything has to be 3D. Turned in, inside out. Interiors. Wow. Yeah. So you're doing, you know, we think about this, we're doing the world, like our screen behind us. You know, we're doing the universe, we're doing the world. Um, we did over above, now we're doing 3D. We can walk down the street because of Google Maps and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. And then now we're going to go into the buildings and start doing that, which are great for things like fire departments. Oh, they totally, yeah. You know, they security. can use it. Security, security. your business, oh, all yeah. of those kinds of things. Yeah, we need um, it. it. doesn't exist. Environmental health, just the breathing, yeah. the air, sure. yeah. Yeah. like schools with their temperatures. But, and think about plumbing, like pl if you can map the plumbing systems and the electrical systems yeah. and the data systems and, you know. AR, that's the next big one, yep. I think. Not virtual reality, but augmented. Augmented yeah, reality. Augmented reality, reality, yeah. So you people can, want to see all the infrastructure. Yeah, where's sure. my pipes? Where's my valves? You know, when you look at it, it looks like a wall, but you put the VR on. And then because of their technology, you can see everything behind right. it. Right, and that's what people find want. A, find a leak. I needed that about a month ago when I couldn't find a leak in one of our, in, in my condo and ended up having to cut out the whole section of the drywall to find where the shutoff see? valves were. Yeah. No one knew. Yeah. It's always that way. That I happens. had to guess. Yeah, and there's never a set of drawings. Yeah. I ran about that myself. All yeah, the time. There were, no, where are they? So oh, who knows? With Esri, hopefully it'll all just be, it'll be online and available for everybody else to use. Like, just, imagine when the, if the plumbers would supply that information right yeah. into Esri or whatever. That'd be nice. Boy, wouldn't that be nice. Anyway, so we, let's talk about the Hawaii Geographic Information Coordinating Council. What that? What? Oh, I'm exhausted. I've said it like three times. So They're tell us what that... They're all smart guys, so they have long names for stuff. <laughs> tell us about that. All right, so that, we'll start with the name. So we didn't create the name uh, <laughs> ourselves. In fact, there's something called NISGIC, oh, no. uh, the yeah. National States Geographic Information Coordinating oh, okay. Council for all the states. Okay. And so from the, it's an NA, National, and JIG. So Hawaii JIG, H-I-G-I-C-C <laughs> became... Oh, every so state basically has one. Oh, so everybody has a JIC. Everybody has yeah, a G-I-C-C. So mostly... So it's your two-letter oh, two yeah. abbreviation so for your Arkansas state. So Arkansas would be a K, 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 whatever. Yeah, some of them changed a little bit, but actually it was something the federal government years and years ago brought together, because again, the data was such an issue that everybody had data, but it was on different formats. Nobody right. knew that. You, they weren't sharing it. And about... Before the internet, you had to physically sneaker net, we call it, right? Give yeah. it over, right? So all the, like, the USGS especially came together and said, hey, we want to kind of form these, all the like-minded people get together in a room, share data, talk about what you need, tell us what you need. And so they came about this whole infrastructure. So we started in 1999 around in Hawaii. So all the seating county and the state people, and some of the private people, right. we got together and we formed our organization. Since then, we've you know, kept it going for almost 20 years now. Yeah, so, and so what do you, what, what, what do, you do? I mean, so it's really an, uh, mostly an advocacy uh, organization. So we look at what's coming around, make sure that it makes sense as far as a GIS type person. But also, we do things like we have an annual scholarship over a thousand dollars at nice. least, or sometimes two, 
for students, for college students. We do GIS Day once a year, generally, uh, for high, high school students. Uh, then we also have these little like conferences and expos, we call them. So the conferences are big. Right. Like, two years ago, we did it with HCPO, the Hawaii Congress Planning Officials. Mm -hmm. We had a joint conference. And then th this year, we had a, we call them expos, where it's like a one day focus on just GIS. We had it here in Honolulu at the Convention Center. And on August 4th, we're going to have another one in Hilo, the University of Hilo, Hawaii, uh, to have one for the Big Island people. So let's talk about that one on August 4th. Because is, is it open to the public? Or how uh, does that work? It's a 20-hour registration fee, fee, but there's lunch included. So you're really just paying for lunch. But it's open to the public. So yeah, you, yeah, sure, you know, anyone wants to go and they get oh, to yeah, see yeah. what's happening in yep. this space. Yep. Um, and the next one is in Hilo. Yep. So why not take it? Because you know, you know, neighbor islands don't always get an opportunity to. Exactly. Um, uh, yeah. So where in Hilo is it at? The university at the auditorium. They have a nice, very nice. Oh yeah, yeah, they do. You bet. It's really nice up there. And then we do it in the summer because then they, they've been really nice help, helping us out. So they give us it's free parking because it's in the summer. Right. And then the room is free because it's being sponsored by uh, uh, Dr. Ryan Proy from the University of Hawaii Hilo Geography Department. So he was awesome. able to get together sure. with us. He does a lot of the drone stuff and the lava flows. Okay. Uh, so you got drones, lava flows. How exciting! How exciting an <laughs> industry is this, I man? I think if people yeah. aren't aware, paint guns. <laughs> yeah, if people aren't aware of how how much of this data impacts their life oh, every day, it's been collect. It's a yep. massive, massive data set, and we're. The, the, the resolutions have only gotten better. Right? Oh, so what are you down to now? One one inch? What 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 do you what, what can yeah. you, what can the normal person get their hands one on? One meter I mean, would be more meter, okay. average. We, we definitely have gotten even the state we did this pro, uh, program to fly the whole coast down to like two centimeters. Wow! And you can literally see like a can of you know soda yeah. sitting on the beach or footprints or read a driver's license number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> all that kind of cool. Yeah. Well, all that kind of cool stuff. So and then you got there's GIS Day. Yeah, usually we have that in the fall. That started years ago with National Geographic Alliance and National Geographic itself. Okay. Uh, and that was for schools. And so they have a geography week is in November, the second week of November. Okay. And then years ago, many years ago, they decided, hey, let's have a GIS day included with that. So it's usually that Wednesday. And then, again, what we'll do is it's just people from city and county, from states, they take a day off, and we all get together. And then we organize some schools to come out with buses. We have little stations, so one will be on GPS, one will be on... Usually we do it at NOAA lately, so if they're really nice about you know, marine science mm -hmm. and maybe a ship captain. Once it was really funny, some ship captains were in, talking to the students, and they're asking questions. It was really funny to see. Well, get to, for a and student drones. to get to exposure right. to someone that's in the real world of doing this versus trying to read it in a textbook or yeah. see it in a PowerPoint slide, it just doesn't quite make it. I mean, video helps a little bit when you've got the yeah. real person there. No, it's so much better, yeah. They love it. Yeah, the yeah and it, I mean, that, I don't know if they understand that it's not just like terrestrial. It extends to marine, it extends to the, right. the ocean right. floor, it extends to space, it, you yeah. know, these, yeah. it extends to things, the counting and tracking of yeah. things. So there's yeah. just, if you're collecting data, it's going into these, these yeah. types of systems. And this year was funny, too, because that, they kind of, somebody was going to do this pr session where they were going to teach these kids how to make these online story maps, we call them. Okay. And then they bailed out, and I get the call, of course. Oh, Craig, can you do it for us? And I'm like thinking, how am I going to teach these kids how to make internet story maps in under 20 minutes? I'm like, I don't think wow. it's possible, right? right. So I go in there, and I... And the kids were just like way ahead of me. They were done in like 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Was so like, that's a success. <laughs> yeah, it's super easy. I thought, you know, it would be really hard. It was hard for me to come up with, but for them, they were like, oh, this is great. I have to show them one example. They are like, oh, yeah, get out of the way. I know how to do this. So this is on the, the, the web portal that... Yeah, we have a room full of 20 computers. And right. the students I had never met, they came in. They're all from different high schools. We have like four sessions, right. one after another. And they just come in. I gave them a little demo, kind of a idea of what we were talking about. And they're like, oh, great. And then this year, we did the Hokulea voyage. So we had oh. data from the Hokulea. Oh. And we had some you know, pictures of the ports. And so the kids get to see, you know, well, they went to Australia. They went to South Africa, up to Cuba, New York. And then we had a picture, and they made a little web story, and they were able to go home at night and say, "Hey, mom and dad, look, I did look this. At this. I did this." And they show it, and they bring, bring it up online and yeah. say, "Look, it's done." Online. And, then, and the computer. parents are going to be going like, "No, no, no." no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so great. We, so we talked a little bit about 3D and uh, uh, augmented reality. Where, where, where's, where's it going? What, what, what's next? Because I mean, it's. It's growing. Yeah, the only thing it doesn't do currently, and it's going to be very soon, is the smartphones. Because mm -hmm. they don't have the power yet. Yeah. But like on the internet now, we've figured it out. So it's like you can actually take your drone, fly it, put your stuff into some software, hit a button, go, and go home, and you turn on the internet, and it's in 3D on your internet oh, right. browser. Like the flight. 
No, the whole building. Whatever you take, if you flew around a building, you have a 3D building that you can go around. It's pretty awesome. Like, and that's all it is. It really is. Yeah, it's that easy now. Whereas, yeah, years ago, you had to like do all the kinds oh, of stuff. Oh, I remember. Big computer. Oh, or so are you, yeah, are you, is that data then added to the data set, the, the greater data set that all can use? Is it, it, is that it depends how, on how who's doing it. You sure. Know, a lot of private companies here are doing it for, you know, real estate or for development. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, Yeah, stuff like that. Building, some of the building firms, they were telling me that they go, then nowadays they just fly once a week for mm -hmm. their building just check on status. Yeah. It is automatic. Oh, it's Monday. Let's go fly the drone. And they want to see, you know, how the construction is going and what, where the trucks are, where things are. They it's just done. do it every week now. That's part of okay, the Okay, believe it or not, we're, wind, we're winding down. So any last quick message to anyone who wants to get into this field or, or go to the show? Yeah. It's a great growing field. So, yeah, definitely come to our website, HIGICC.com. H I G I C dot org dot org. org. Yeah. Uh, or just yeah, Google it. And then uh, yeah, we have this one coming up on August fourth in Hilo. But we also have events in throughout the year here. It's a fun in it's really it's a fun industry yeah. and, and yeah. a possible great career that great you career. enjoy. Great career. I totally. only wish, I only wish. Anyway, you get an autographed solo cup from the uh, series, number 125 in the series. Thank you, sir. It may mean something at 125. I don't know, but please do not um, do not sell that on eBay <laughs> <laughs> or Craigslist or any GIS-related. Hey, Craigslist is okay with Craigslist, us. Yeah, all right, yeah, all right. <laughs> anyway, thank you, Craig. Thank you. Clue, Cluet from Esri and Andrew, the security guy. It's always fun to have you yep. on the show. Thanks all for the team at the back of the house who keep us straight and now and like we say at the end of every show one two three how, how you doing, doing?